I drove into the garage and I put my hand up on my button and the garage door came down. And then I reached over with my hand to open the door and I, I couldn't find the, the door handle. I lost, I lost complete control of my hand. By the time I arrived at the emergency clinic at Barrows, I was in a full-blown seizure. So then they put me in the MRI, and the next thing I remember, I wake up. The surgeon comes in, a young guy. He says, well, you've got a brain tumor. Uh, we have to take it out, and then we can decide how we treat it. What we see here are your post-op study. We see a small cavity there with a tiny nodule of enhancement along the anterior lateral margin, which is hopefully post-operative change. And they said, we removed the brain tumor. We think we got it all out. I said, well, what's next? And then they talked about the next therapy. At that moment, it struck me that I will never be that cardiovascular surgeon again that I was. Dr. Dietrich was one of the best trained and most skilled surgeons in the country and probably in the world. There was an elegance in his surgical technique that made everyone sit up and take notice. He founded the Arizona Heart Institute here in Phoenix. My principal motive was make it safer and make it simpler. And that is the real thing that led into the endovascular field, where you didn't have to make an incision, you didn't have blood loss, patients could be discharged sometimes the same day. But to do that, we had to have the same capability to image and take pictures in the operating room that they had in the catheterization laboratory. I found it in the University of Münster in Germany. We brought that to St. Joe Hospital, and that was the first one in the world, except for the one at Münster. Working around radiation is sort of like keeping a pet tiger in your living room. It can be great as long as you don't take your eye off of him for any minute. When we started doing these procedures, nobody questioned what we did. The last thing I was thinking about was how much radiation am I exposing my body to? Yes, I put on the lead aprons, but you can imagine if you've got a lead apron on your shoulder for hours at a time, that creates a lot of muscle spasm, tension, and so forth. Being a doctor, my whole motive was to help the patient and get the patient well. I didn't think about the hazardous conditions. I have no question in my mind that my carotid artery, which had a very, very dense calcific plaque was related to excessive radiation. I've already had bilateral lens implants in both eyes, and there's unequivocal evidence that radiation is a major cause of cataracts. I'm highly suspicious that that little eight millimeter brain tumor, the oligodendroglioma, it's the same radiation exposure. It's coming the same way. If it would cause this, why wouldn't it cause this? So I'm kind of a living example of excessive radiation and what it can do to tissue. I, I, think I, I, I think I felt this radiation cannot hurt me. It can't hurt me. I felt indestructible. Obviously, I didn't know what I was talking about, did I? 